everybody and welcome back to the channel. Since I fly about East Fortune all the time, I thought it might be really interesting to have a look at what's the history of East Fortune, what's behind it, what's what's around it, and so on. So I was fascinated to find out actually East Fortune Airfield was initially built back in 1917 for the First World War and it had a massive hangar which housed those huge airships. Um, now the first airship crossing of the Atlantic started at East Fortune and that went to Manola in New York in 1919. Then between the First and Second World Wars the airfield became a hospital stroke sanatorium for tuberculosis patients for, who were from South East Scotland. At the start of the Second World War the hospital patients were moved to a hospital over in West Lothian probably about 20 miles away and then the airfield was put back into use for fighters and night fighter training. The RAF East Fortune motto was Fortune Favours the Bold. Unfortunately, those years of training were full of accidents, a combination of old aircraft, young and inexperienced crew, low level flying training, no height to bail out if an engine failed, and night training in a blackout in the middle of the war which brought a very real danger of flying into terrain. Following the war in 1961, for a short time, East Fortune became Edinburgh Airport, whilst the real Edinburgh Airport at Turnhouse was reconstructed. The only noticeable incident from the period of being Edinburgh Airport was a flight from Paris landed and then overshot the end of the runway, but happily there were no injuries. Now, the concrete section of runway 2911 that we use was actually laid in 1961 as part of the extension to allow the airfield to become Edinburgh Airport. So East Fortune today we've got the National Museum of Flight, there are motorcycle racetrack days which are operated by the Melville Motor Club, there's a small private strip at the other end of the area called East Fortune East. Now that's not open to visitors but they do open it one day a year. Another part of the original airfield is now regularly hosts supercar and HGV experience days. And of course, we have East of Scotland Microlights, which is the longest established microlight school and club in Scotland. And it was started by Gordon Douglas back in 1989. If you are flying to East Fortune, then PPR is required and the radio frequency is 118.755 and blind calls should be made, th made throughout your joining. The airfield sits 120 feet above mean sea level and all approaches must be made by the standard overhead join at 1,500 feet AGL and circuit height is 500 feet AGL. Our dead side is always to the north towards the railway line. Runways 29 and 25 are left-hand circuits and joining downwind will take you overhead the Air Museum and then the base leg takes you across to and then above the old runway. For 29, you're now on final, but for 25, extend the base a bit more over the field to the right of the old runway. 25 is initially flat as it crosses the tarmac and then it slopes uphill on grass. Should note that 2507, the grass section, is prone to waterlogging and can be very, very soft. 11 and 07 are right hand circuits. Joining downwind, you're over the field immediately north and west of the, of the airfield. It's a very tight circuit. The base and final are all done over that field and please do not fly over the properties in the far corner, far side of that field. 07 requires a tight turn onto final. Your speed management is crucial because the runway slopes downhill. 11 is a nice constant radius descending turn to come in and over the numbers. Because there is no straight in final, this is the one that will throw visiting pilots, but it's actually a real joy to land on. East of Scotland Microlights has an office, a clubhouse, toilets, and camping is possible on the apron. But do please call and speak to the team there before you to plan your visit before you arrive. Fuel may be available, but it's only by prior arrangement. There's no there's no catering at the airfield. You can buy a nice coffee when the airfield office is open. Alternatively, the Mary Hatton Garden Centre is very close. It's underneath our dead side. It does breakfast, lunches, tea, coffee, and cakes. 
but it does close around about half past five. Um, if you're visiting for a trial flight, the voucher for the trial flight gives you 10% off at Mary Hatton, so take it with you. The National Museum of Flight is very close by, it's a short walk away. Unfortunately, they don't offer any discounts to our flight experience uh, visiting pilots or club members. If you are visiting and you want to go a bit further afield, then Drem Railway Station is a short taxi journey away, and that's on the Edinburgh to North Berwick line. Trains are roughly once per hour in each direction, but do check the timetable before you visit. East of Scotland, Microlight has an excellent website, so do please check that for any for pilot information, and there's also web cameras there that allow you to check conditions before you set off. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was really fascinating digging into the history of East Fortune. If you are visiting, have a safe journey there, have a safe, safe flight there, and I'll hopefully see you there. Thank you and take care.